Ah, Trace Leche's Cake. Not only is it a delicious dessert, but it was also one of my very first videos on this channel. I mean, yeah, obviously, look how crummy the footage looks. It also probably didn't help that I had this as the thumbnail. I could remake this with the semi-professional tools I have right now, but the market is more flooded than a Louisiana cul-de-sac. So how do I stand out? Make an all chocolate Trace Leite's cake. First things first, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Did the leader of your country die in a tragic helicopter crash? The number you're looking for is 175 degrees Celsius. Okay, to begin, let's start out with the dry ingredients. Well, most of them, as you'll soon see. And uh, you're gonna need a kitchen scale for this. Link in the description if you want one. Yep, I'm going full Alton Brown on this episode because A, well, um, this recipe is a modified version of his devil's food cake. And B, I spent so much time behind the scenes trying to perfect this recipe that this is the best way to do it. So to a bowl, let's add 10 and a half ounces of cake flour. 10 and a half ounces of brown sugar. One teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. And half a teaspoon of salt. All right, let's whisk the dry ingredients together. There we go, it's all mixed up. Insert low hanging political joke here. All right, we're taking care of the dry ingredients. Now for the wet ingredients. Well, most of the wet ingredients. You might have noticed that despite me making a chocolate product, there is no cocoa powder until now. Listen, because of the crazy properties of cocoa powder, it's best just to mix it in with the wet ingredients. So to a mixing bowl, let's add three quarters cup of cocoa powder. Then let's add one cup of boiling water. Add the paddle attachment. Combine these on low. That's looking a little, um, that's looking a little bit thin. Let me add more cocoa. Okay, well having the mixer on low speed, let's drizzle in one cup of vegetable oil. Why vegetable oil? Because, well, I tried using the traditional butter, but it came out too hard and dry, so oil. And let's add two thirds a cup of sour cream. It looks like you're taking a white poop. Yes, indeed, Stewie. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Mix it on low. Okay, while the mixer is still running, let's add in two eggs and two egg yolks. Geez, it's really hard to maneuver with all this filming equipment in the way. And half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And with the mixer on the lowest setting, let's add our dry ingredients to our wet ones. In batches, that is. All right, let's scrape down the sides of the bowl. YouTube, it's chocolate, don't demonetize me. Okay, our cake batter is ready for a pan. Speaking of which. All right, grab a nine by 13 oven proof baking dish. Spray down with non-stick spray. Pour in some flour. All right, dump out the excess. And let's pour our batter in. And it's ready for the oven. Place our cake in the middle of our 350 degree oven and let it bake for 35 minutes. After 35 minutes, take our cake out of the oven and uh, let this cool down. Okay, and while our cake cools down, my AZ bill is gonna be through the roof this month. Support me on Patreon. Let's take care of the Trace Leches portion of our Trace Leches cake. Now we're gonna be making a chocolate version of the Trace Leches filling. Add one can of sweetened condensed milk. And let's add one third cup of cocoa powder. 
Mix until the cocoa is fully incorporated. And since you don't want cocoa ending up everywhere, go nice and slow at first. Then let's add one can of evaporated milk. Since this is thicker than a Cartoon Network mom, we're gonna add this in batches. Then let's add half a cup of milk and half a cup of heavy cream. And to round everything out, half a teaspoon of vanilla. I have an apron, I keep forgetting to use it. Oh sweet chocolate belly numb the pain. All right, the cake still needs to cool down, so let's work on the chocolate whipped cream topping. Oh, no, I'm not wearing a different shirt. YouTube's just glitching out on you. Why? YouTube hates small creators. Don't question me. Just remember, YouTube bad, creator good. Now, by product. Anyway, gaslighting complete. Back to the whipped cream. So, to a bowl, let's add one cup of heavy whipping cream. One cup of sugar. One teaspoon vanilla. And a third of a cup of cocoa powder. That might have been more than a third of a cup, but hey, that just means it's more chocolatey. Now, whether you're using a stand or hand mixer, like I am, make sure you start out slow so you can incorporate the sugar and cocoa into the cream. If you don't, well, your entire kitchen is going to be looking like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory if it took place in 1980s Miami Beach. Okay, once the chocolate has fully been incorporated, you can get the beans and whip it to stiff peaks. Yeah, these peaks are looking pretty stiff. Okay, the cake is nice and cool. Hmm, I wonder why it cooled down so quickly. All right, since the cake needs to absorb all of our milk, let's make it easier by poking holes with them chopsticks. All right, let's put our chocolate milk mixture in. All right, let's give it a moment for the milk to absorb. Eh, it's not fully soaked, but time is of the essence here. And finally, let's layer on our chocolate whipped cream. And Boom. I want to let this, now ideally, you want to let this refrigerate for an hour or two, but fuck it, I'm hungry now, let's end the show. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ making cooking fun and meaning it this time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. And for the last time, I did not change my shirt. Don't ask questions. Consume product.